for any citrus dessert. If it's sweeter than it is sour, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. I always want it to be like really tart. Today I have a recipe for you that is a perennial favorite, a recipe that I'm like, why don't I make this more? It's so good, so easy, so few ingredients. It is key lime pie, the best dessert there is that has no season. Make it all year round. Key lime pie is so interesting. I did do a little bit of research into the history. When I think of key lime pie, I think of Key West. It's like, must be a dessert from there. Apparently the origins are a little bit contested. What do you want, Kat? What is, what do you want? I want the ball that's behind the Oh, desk. you want your ball? Okay, okay, here. I did do a little bit of research into the actual origins. Turns out it's like slightly contested and not really certain but certain evidence points to it coming from actually like recipe developers for sweetened condensed milk. It makes sense to me. This is kind of one of those like very American desserts that is sort of based on like pantry ingredients. So every key lime pie recipe is built around a can of sweetened condensed milk and the filling is so simple. It's just egg yolk, lime juice, sweetened condensed milk, little lime zest often, and that's it. You know, little details here and there that I'm gonna try to use it to like enhance this already really delicious recipe, but for the most part, it's like, I'm not, I'm not messing with perfection here. Let's start with the crust. I have six ounces of graham crackers, four tablespoons unsalted butter, a little bit of granulated sugar, salt. For the filling, I have vanilla extract, one can of sweetened condensed milk, a whole bunch of limes, which I'm gonna zest and then juice, and egg yolks. Then for the topping, I have a cup of heavy cream, a couple tablespoons powdered sugar, and a little bit of an unusual addition, four tablespoons cream cheese. The only special equipment you'll really need is a nine inch pie plate. I have a metal one here, which I don't typically use, but I think it's gonna look kind of good. And then you don't even need a mixer. It's all gonna be done by hand. See this bag and how it's like kind of gnarly looking? This is my graham cracker crust bag that I use to crush graham crackers or like other cookies and I save it. And every time I look at it, I'm like, should I throw that away? And then I'm happy that I have it. So I'm putting the graham crackers inside the bag and then kind of pressing out the air and sealing it. Yes, you could do this in the food processor. Yes, you could use like pre-ground graham cracker crumbs, which is kind of a great time saver. But I do like doing it by hand because one, I think it's easier to control how fine the crumbs are, and two, you get irregular sizes. These are gonna go into my bowl. This I'll save for the next time. Then I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of kosher salt. I like having a kind of slightly salty base. It's a nice contrast to the filling. Then two tablespoons of granulated sugar. And I forgot to melt my butter. So I do wanna melt this. This is four tablespoons of unsalted butter, which I will melt. I know you're not supposed to do this, right? What? Be that close to a microwave that's operating? Look, microwaves, microplastics, there's just a lot of things out there that are not good for you. Okay, so I'm not adding a lot of sugar, just two tablespoons, because I'm not really trying to sweeten it. The point of the sugar is that the sugar mixes with the butter that I'm adding, and as it bakes, those things kind of form, like they fuse in the oven as they bake and, and help to set this crust. So I'm gonna add the butter. Because I'm not adding a lot of sugar, I wanna increase the sturdiness of the crust and that's why I add one egg yolk. It's not really a typical addition to graham cracker crust, but I think it does help to hold everything together really well. So I have five yolks remaining, that's gonna go into the filling. 
I'm gonna stir all this together really well with a spatula. You could use a fork. So once I have it well combined and everything incorporated, I'm gonna switch to my hands. It helps to just even out the moisture so that I have a mixture that looks uniformly like wet sand. And that's how you know you're ready to press it into your pie plate. I have some, you know, some larger crumbs and some finer crumbs, but it's all pretty uniformly mixed with the butter and the yolk. So it's well incorporated and I have this mixture that kind of looks like wet sand. You can see that it doesn't look wet or greasy, but when I pack it together, it holds. So that's what you're looking for. This is a nine inch, not a deep dish pie plate. So I kind of go in with my hands and start to build the bottom and then work the mixture up against the sides, kind of evenly distributing it all the way around. So now I'm gonna take my measuring cup and I like to start on the bottom and really press it in to kind of flatten it. And now I'm gonna, working at like a, you know, an angle to match the angle of the side, I'm gonna use the measuring cup to press it up the side. This is gonna have great texture because while it is gonna hold together really well so I can take out a nice, clean, sharp slice, it has lots of different size pieces of graham crackers. So they'll be like a nice kind of light crunch where you hit a bigger piece and sort of a more firm, like even crust texture where the crumbs are a little bit finer. My oven is on 350. I'm gonna bake this. And there's not like a super distinct indicator when your graham cracker crust is done. Oftentimes you see ones that are just no bake and this is like where you stop, especially if it's served chilled. But I like to bake it, I think it's really important. And you know it's done when you see like a, that the edge is nice and dark brown, it's gonna smell like super toasty and delicious. So I have probably more limes than I need here. But you wanna zest before juicing because it's a lot easier to zest like a whole lime than it is to zest like a squeezed wedge or half. I have my microplane here. And you want to be careful that you're just taking off the green part and not any of the pith underneath. I have watched so many people use a microplane. I've always done it this way, but people do this. But like, I don't, I just, it's just not my way. I totally get it. And this, I believe, is the proper technique. I mean, it actually does kind of work. It's a question of do you want to move the microplane or do you want to move the lime? I'd rather move the lime. So I'm at a, probably about a tablespoon. Now I'm gonna juice the limes. I wanna juice them until I get about three quarters of a cup of lime juice. These fortunately are relatively thin skin limes. By the way, I'm not using key limes. I love the flavor of key limes, but they're harder to find. They kind of have a specific season and they're really small, so they're a pain to juice. So rarely do you see key lime pie that's actually made with key, with key lime. So just using regular grocery store limes. So I'm just using this little citrus reamer here to juice them. I'm gonna pour them through this strainer into my measuring cup and I'm just gonna keep going until I get to three quarters of a cup. I probably won't need all of these. The crust has been in, it's been in only for eight minutes. It already smells really done and that edge is really brown. So I'm gonna pull it out. So you see that nice dark ring around the top. Crust is done. I'm gonna let it hang out there while I finish the filling. One thing I really like about key lime pie is it uses one full can of sweetened condensed milk because it's not the most convenient thing to split and like save you know part of the can. But then the quantities of yolk and juice vary. So you could decrease the amount of juice and you'll get something a little less tart. You could increase obviously if you like it like a lot more sour. If you want something a little richer, add more yolks. If you like a looser, you know, not as quite firm a set, you can add fewer. So it's really up to you but I like this particular balance. So I have my main components, my lime juice, my yolks, my sweetened condensed milk. I also have kosher salt and vanilla extract. So I'm just adding a little bit of both as flavor enhancers, but really it's just in the background. So I'm gonna put together my filling. Start by opening my can. This can is kind of lethal though. Is this ever gonna come off? Mm -mm, you're in trouble. <laughs> there we go. So obviously I'm not adding additional sugar. There is plenty of sugar in this bean condensed milk. So then about a teaspoon of vanilla extract goes in. Just a little pinch of kosher salt. I'm not really gonna measure. Then I'm gonna add my yolks. Again, five large 
egg yolks. Whisk all of this together. When all that is smooth, then in goes the lime juice. And just whisk this until you have a smooth mixture. Oh, this looks so good. I have this nice, thick, smooth, custardy filling. And I love seeing the flecks of lime zest. So this has cooled slightly in my crust, but it's still warm. I do like actually pouring custard fillings into a hot pie crust because it does help to set it at the bottom really quickly and then it bakes faster. But one important note is I bake this at 350 and I wanna turn down my oven to 325 because with any kind of custard filling with eggs, you wanna kinda of go low and slow. Oven's preheated, so now I'm gonna pour this filling into my pie plate. Smooth the top a little bit. Very limey. Now into my oven. So I wanna bake that until I see that the filling has set. It's gonna be particularly set around the edges and the center will have a slight wobble. Um, but I don't want to get any color on the surface. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. I think it's going to go like 15 to 20 minutes. My timer is about to go off. So I set the timer for 15 minutes. It wasn't quite done. I set it for one more. There it is. I think it's ready. There's no color on the surface. That's why we baked it at 325. I just want it to be cooked enough so that the eggs are set. So when I give it a little wobble, well, actually, when I give it like a shake, basically the whole thing kind of holds together as one piece, but there's a little bit of movement. I want to jiggle it like that. So this looks good. So this is really hot. I want to let it rest at room temperature, have it release a little bit of steam. And then once it's had a chance to cool a little bit, I'm gonna put it in the fridge. And then I wanna let it get really cold. It'll take a few hours because this is best served chilled. So then we're gonna to top it with our whipped cream, cream cheese topping and taste it. In most cases, the topping for key lime pie is just whipped cream, which is great. But I am adding a little bit of cream cheese, something I've been playing around with as a way of stabilizing the whipped cream. It's common to add like creme fraiche or sour cream or another kind of cultured dairy product to stabilize whipped cream because if you were to whip cream and just let it sit there, it tends to like liquefy again and kind of fall and deflate. So not only do I like the little bit of tanginess that it adds and it kind of gives it like a slight cheesecakey quality in a good way, um, but it also is functional because it just makes everything more stable. I have two ounces or four tablespoons room temp cream cheese, also important. Let me get this into my bowl. I have really tart filling in my key lime pie, so I'm gonna add two tablespoons of powdered sugar to my topping to sweeten it a little bit. So in that goes. So then I'm gonna use my spatula. I'm gonna use my spatula to kind of work this together. And because the cream cheese is room temp, it's pretty soft, so this is easy to do. So when all of that is smooth, I'm going to switch to my whisk. So scrape off that spatula, get everything back into the bowl. Here's the only part of this where you wanna be careful. I'm going to add my cold cream to that room temp mixture, but I'm gonna do it very, very slowly because if I were to pour all of this in, the cold from the cream would stiffen the cream cheese and I would get some lumps in there. I want it to be super smooth. So I'm just gonna start by adding a little bit of cream, just like a couple teaspoons at a time and whisking really, really well to incorporate it. So adding the cream really, really slowly in the beginning is gonna to help to prevent lumps from forming. If your bowl's moving around, here's my pro tip. Grab a kitchen towel, grab it from two opposite corners and tie it around the bowl. This is also great if you're making mayo. Okay, not unlike this actually. So just sort of like slowly drizzling in the cream. And once you have the mixture thinned out to the point where it's kind of pourable, which is basically where we are, you can basically just whisk the rest of the cream in. You don't have to go slowly. There's no more risk of lumps forming. So that's the rest of the heavy cream. I'm gonna actually just scrape in anything that's left in the cup. So now I have my cream and my cream cheese incorporated, and now I'm just going to whip this. It's been a while since I whipped cream by hand. One time my sister called me and she was like, how long does it take to whip cream? I was like, 
in the stand mixer. And I was like, well, how much cream do you have? She was like, two cups. I was like, what speed is it on? She was like, hi. I was like, how long has it been going? 45 minutes? I'm like, oh no, something went wrong. It was not the right kind of cream. <laughs> it, does ha it does go faster in a bigger bowl. It's getting pretty thick. Now it's really up to you. It's kind of an aesthetic choice if you go, like how much you're gonna whip the cream. If you want a kind of like natural, sort of easy going look, you can go to soft peaks and then just kind of like swoosh it over the surface. Or if you want something a little more decorative, you can go to firm peaks and then you can pipe it. It's really up to you. All right, so I'm kind of between soft and medium peaks here. I think I'm just gonna swoosh it over. Get such a nice color from the yolk. Now that it's cold, I know it's cold because the bottom is like super cold to the touch. No, <laughs> no wobbling or wiggling to that filling. It's nice and firm. So now I'm gonna just scrape that topping onto the surface. Okay, so right onto the top. I'm gonna just kind of smooth it around. You don't wanna touch it too much, that's really kind of the key to getting it to look good. Okay, that's probably all I should really do to it. I can feel that the cream is already kind of like tightening a little bit. And that is in large part to that cream cheese that I added. Kind of can't stop eating it. I could go ahead and serve this right now because we have the cream cheese in that whipped topping. This is gonna hang out in the fridge, it's not gonna fall. So this is a great do ahead. If you wanna make this for company, go ahead and you can add that topping before dinner, keep it in the fridge, and then go ahead and slice it later. So I'm gonna just throw it back in the fridge and then we'll do a little final what, lime zest garnish and taste. All right, just ignore whatever. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, time to taste the key lime pie. I'm gonna grab it from the fridge. Very excited, just ignore what's happening over here. So here's the pie. I'm gonna give it a little bit of lime zest, mostly for color. So I have my one extra lime right here. You can hold the grater up a little higher so that the little flecks of lime zest spread out on the pie. Here we go, it's ready. I'm gonna cut a slice. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to eat this. It looks so good. The texture you get with that combination of yolk and sweet condensed milk, it's so silky. I'm very excited to try it. I like the proportion a lot of filling to topping. I think if it's like a really thick slice, it just gets a little bit overwhelming in how citrusy it is. Mm. It's not too tart. I like that the topping is only a little tiny bit sweet. What I also really like is that that very like point of the pie, which is in the very center, still has a little bit of crunch to it. It didn't get soggy and wet, and you just get this like perfect set in this silky filling. I don't think that there's a more perfect dessert. No, there is, but it's pretty perfect. What is it? There's a lot of perfect desserts out there, but. What would be more perfect than key lime? Chocolate chip cookie? Chocolate chip cookie. For sure. I don't know. I can't think right now. I'm kind of busy with this, but garlic knots. It's pretty good. <laughs> Not garlic knots. Mm. Come try this. Come here. Mm. The the whipped cream has cream cheese in it. You still have that thing on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a touch. I love the cream cheese. Yeah. Do you want it even more tart? Do you think it's good? I think it's a good balance. No, I think it's right on. I think it's right on. Nice. It seems to me like a pretty low effort dessert. There's something about it that feels very kind of like. Tropical, it's fruit forward, but really it uses like mostly pantry ingredients. So definitely worth trying. If you're a beginner baker, I think this is a great recipe to start out. Can't be improved, love it so much. Key lime pie, can't wait to finish my slice. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.